Hey guys, so today's video is confessions from a former politically obsessed person. So I'm making this video kind of as a follow-up to my last video of why Christians or should Christians say let's go Brandon. I thought this was necessary because I think um, watching that video, uh, some of my friends were really surprised at what I shared, but I wanted to share in this video, one, I want to clarify a few things, and two, I want to share my heart, my journey, and how God has brought me to where I'm at now and continue, continuing to work on me in my thoughts about politics. So first, I want to clarify that um, I do believe that Christians should be um, educated about politics and to be involved in politics in the sense that some, I think very few, will be in a political position, you know, a representative or in government in some way. I think that some people may be called to do that. But I think that the average person, like we should vote, we should be educated on policies, we should um, be reading up on the news and what's going on. Like I do think those are things we should do and advocate for things that are in line with God's word. Um, but that said, I believe that we as Christians in 2021 have gone too far with making politics higher than our own faith and our own relationship with Christ and our own um, studying of the word, our own desire to study of the word. And so a lot of what I share is just encouraging Christians to not just look to political ideas, but look for a biblical perspective, to use critical thinking to say, how would Jesus handle these situations? What is a biblical perspective on these things? So I want to talk to you guys about how I was politically obsessed for a while. It was like a newfound hobby. Not, I guess that maybe makes it sound a little extreme, but I used to not be in politics at all. And then um, with the election that we had coming up, uh, the last election that we had, I was really all into that. So that was like in November, right? When we had our last election and I was listening to all the political podcasts and all of that and stayed up too late the night of the election and had a lot of fear, I think, about the future and the beginning of God kind of working on my heart was even before that, it kind of started around the time when I made that video. Um, I think it was titled Thoughts from a White Conservative Christian. Um, I will link that down below. But God began to work on my heart um, when the issue of racism was going on in our country. And then I think even before that or after that, I can't remember the lining up of events, but um, I was really, to be honest, and I know this is kind of a triggering topic, but I feel like it's worth sharing just where I'm coming from. This is not me saying yes or no. This is not me expressing my opinion to try to change people's opinion. I just want to share with you guys my experience um, with the issue of masks. So in Washington state, people started wearing masks. Some people did before they were required. And when that was happening, before they were re required, I was like, I'm not wearing a mask. Like, that's like an invasion of my rights. That was really my perspective. And in my, this is how I believe I was handling this. I know people have different reasonings for not wanting to wear masks. But for me personally, it was an issue of pride. I was like, I don't want to wear that. I don't need to wear that. I don't want to be forced to wear that. And then one day I was at grocery outlet with my kids and there was a man there that was on oxygen, had an oxygen tank, was all hooked up. And in that moment, I realized, I was like, oh, if that man gets COVID, like, like it would not go well for him probably. My children and I, we would probably be fine, but that man, probably not. That was a moment that was the beginning of me being humbled on that topic and changing my perspective. And so what I'm getting at here is like God has worked on my heart to not be so hard hearted on things, to not always just think of things in a certain box of the right, the left, but like listening to what God wanted to show me and having more of a heart of humility 
for me. After the election, I continued to listen to podcasts, but they seemed to just always be so down and out. And I realized that my anxiety, I struggle with anxiety, and I realized it was not beneficial for me to listen to political podcasts as much as I was. I think another thing that, this kind of sounds all over the place, but I, I think another thing that really helped me in changing my perspective on just current events and the world where things are going was um, I started cleaning for, well, no, I had been cleaning for them for a while, a family and the wife got cancer for the second time. And I felt really privileged that I was one of the few people that was allowed to come into the house and clean their house for them as um, the wife died of um, cancer and she's gone now. But it, it began to give me more of this heavenly mindset. Like it was like all these different things were adding up for me to start thinking about things differently. And you would think that working for somebody who's dying of cancer would make you more afraid of death and afraid of, you know, what's my future? What if that happens to me? But it didn't. Instead, it almost like helped me to have less of an unknown about death and to realize like, wow, life is so short. Like, I want to live for the Lord. And so um, all these things, God has worked on my heart. And uh, I still struggle with anxiety. I can think of I can always find something to be afraid of, you guys. I can always. I have so many fears, struggling with what people will think of me. I still do have fears. What if I get cancer? Like all those things. So I'm not saying like, oh no, I'm suddenly not afraid of the future. Or suddenly I'm just like totally have this eternally minded mindset. But I feel like God has really worked on my heart in a lot of different areas and to just be more open to how I think about things and to not be so obsessed with politics because politics are not going to change the human condition of sin. Like only Jesus Christ is going to change that. And much more than that, we as believers know that Christ has already won the victory. So I don't have to be afraid of the future. I don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen to our country because I know that God is in control of all things. I know that his purposes will prevail. And I know that God uses even the most difficult, the most unlikely things to um, push forward his purposes. So I don't have to be afraid about that. And I also know that God's ultimate desire is for people to come to know him, to have a personal relationship for him, with him. And so that's changed my heart to say, I don't want to live in such a way and be so on one side when it comes to like politics and so obsessed with politics that I basically prevent myself from reaching other people, from having a voice with other people that may think differently than me. But that's kind of the process of where I've been headed when it comes to my heart um, and my perspective on politics. I wanna do two things now. I wanna share some really practical tips that I have begun to add in my life, which has helped me be less fearful about the future and less having this grip and this hold on politics as much in my life, though I still will always enjoy them. And I still enjoy thinking about my perspective on things and learning and growing and sharing things from a biblical perspective. And I think that's okay, but I want God to be the Lord of my life. I don't want a political person to be the Lord of my life. I don't want a political idea to be the Lord of my life. And I don't want a political side to be the Lord of my life. And that's the process that I'm working on here. So um, first I wanna share with you this really encouraging verse. This was a verse that I had written on a piece of paper and put in my pocket 
when I was going through some teenage drama in high school, but it's such a good verse for today. And it's Isaiah 55 and it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I was thinking about this concept of this bird's eye view and I'll put up a picture here. Uh, that's kind of how God sees things. He sees the whole picture and not even just a bird's eye view of a city, but he sees the whole world. He sees the whole universe and he is knitting together all these different elements for his eternal purposes. And it's kind of like a puzzle slowly working its way together in his timing, not our timing. And, and so I hope that scripture verse encourages you. Here's some very practical things that I have kind of started doing, still working on doing, not perfectly, but will help you feel less fearful, will help you feel less helpless about our world and about our country. So here they are. I'll try to share with you guys them quickly. Number one is stop listening to politics as much because it reduces fear and it helps you think more clearly. Number two, be willing to have conversations with people or just listen to people that think differently than you do. Maybe that's just at the grocery store when you overhear people having a little political conversation or talking about their religious beliefs or whatever and just listen to where they're coming from and try to see the humanity of people and know that People often think a certain way because of their past. And I think it goes a long way for us to have more compassion. Having compassion doesn't mean you agree with somebody, but it helps you understand where people are coming from more. And I think what's scary about social media is that, I was talking to one friend, is that with social media, we're just being fed things that we wanna see. It's like, if all we look at is this one side, then that's all that we're gonna continue to see. And so we're not, we're not seeing people all these different perspectives as much and we're kind of in our own little world in our own little bubble and we forget that there's all different people that think different ways and are hurting you know with things going on in the world for different reasons and so i think just having an open mind gives us more compassion okay i gotta keep moving on to this the next one is start reaching out to people and caring for people for them both in your small circle and globally so doing this through encouragement through praying for people and through meeting tangible needs it has been so encouraging for me to make use of world vision and when there's like a natural disaster, it's so helpful to know I can give to them, know the money is going to a good cause, believers that live in, that are already established in that country, reaching the people in that group. Um, but also what I mean by this, caring for the tangible needs of people is like, um, you know, that friend that you may have that is struggling financially or, you know, they're, they're going through a difficult time, whatever reason, family issues, reaching out to them, maybe bringing them a gift, maybe giving a financial gift, um, that homeless person on the street, not avoiding eye contact, but looking at them and maybe bringing them a meal or something like, let's start actually helping people and reaching people. Okay. So another thought is to start evaluating your heart for fear and anger um, and letting God show you what's really going on there. So oftentimes I think anger is like the secondary emotion to fear. And so if we take a step back and we pray about things and we're like, God, why am I so upset about this? Why am I so fearful about this? And just letting God reveal to you what's really going on in your heart. Cause often we don't know what's really going on in our heart and we need the Lord to reveal that to us. And last, I save the best for last. And you're, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know this one's coming. You know this one's coming. All right guys, cause I just, I can't leave this. I can't leave this alone, okay? And that is to start getting in the word regularly. The best thing I have done in the last few years, because I'm still working through this, is starting to read through the Bible chronologically. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm starting, I've said this before in video, so I'll make it quick, but to see the whole history of God's story in the order of events as, as it happened. And I'm right now reading Ezekiel. So I've been studying the era of the Israelite exile 
in Babylon. And oh my goodness, there are so many things that have just been so encouraging to me, relating it to what is going on in, in today's world and just seeing God's heart for his compassion for his people, his compassion for the other nations that were ungodly, um, seeing his purposes, that they're just so unique and different than we always expect. So if you wanna just start reading the Bible chronologically, I would highly suggest that. But if you wanna jump into what I'm just talking about, how encouraging the exile period is, just start reading Jeremiah. Maybe you're gonna get thrown in there a little bit, but I, I, let me tell you, it has really transformed and been so encouraging to me. I saved the best for last, you guys, because, oh my goodness, permeating ourselves with the truth of God's word is what transforms our life. It's what helps us to have the right perspective about everything, politics, culture, everything. So if we are not in the word, but we're listening to politics a bunch and we're super into that, but we're not in the word, we're not going to, we're just not going to have the right perspective on life. But if we start with the word and then we work out from there, letting that be kind of like this flashlight guiding us in all different areas, then that is the place to be. So that's all that I had to share with you guys. I would love to know any thoughts that you have. Did you go through a phase where you were super into politics and maybe you kind of took a step back? Um, I would just love to know where you're coming from. Maybe even what God's taught you in the last you know year and a half that we've been on this crazy roller coaster of COVID. So please give this video a thumbs up if it was encouraging and helpful to you. If you enjoy the content that I create and it's been an encouragement to you in your walk with the Lord, I would love to have you consider being a Patreon member and supporting this YouTube channel with five or $10 a month so I can keep making these videos. And I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys so much. Okay, bye.